Hey everyone, Mike here from Heroes and Bosses, hanging out once again on Watch It Paint It. This time I'm going to talk about using cork on your bases to create different levels of elevation. Here are the colors that I'll be using in this video and I'll be putting everything onto a standard 30mm Games Workshop base. I've already done a video on something similar using bark chips, but cork board is a lot easier to work with and you can get it in a lot of hobby or stationery stores. So first off, I'm going to tear off a piece that will roughly fit onto the base, and then I'll tear off the excess. I want this to sort of slope downward on the sides, so I'm ripping a bit more from the top rim around the piece of cork. After I'm happy with the size of my piece of cork, I'm going to break it in half to make it look like there's a big crack down the middle, just to make it look cooler, or as people often say in the painting world, to give it more visual interest. Next I'm going to use some super glue and glue these pieces of cork into place. While the glue is hardening, I usually put a book or something onto the cork to hold it down so there's no gaps along the bottom edge. After 10 minutes or so, I'm moving on to some earth texture. Any earth texture will do for this. I'm using Vallejo earth because it's relatively cheap, but you can also use sand and pebbles if you want. Just put down a layer of PVA glue and sprinkle your sand and pebbles onto that. One thing that's great about the earth texture is you can also use it as a glue to anchor down other things. I'm going to add a few rocks to the space just by pressing them into the earth texture. I'm also adding a couple skulls from Citadel Skulls by Games Workshop. I definitely recommend picking these up. That's going to need at least an hour to dry and harden, maybe more. Go watch a movie and come back. After it's dry, prime the whole thing in a dark color. So the first color I have here is Rhinox Hide. I'm mixing this one part paint, two parts water, get it good and watery. Then I'm taking an old crappy brush and I'm putting this all over the cork. It doesn't matter if this gets on everything else. In fact, go ahead and add it to the skulls and the rocks too. Next I'm painting all of the earth texture with a light rusty brown. This one is just called Earth by Vallejo. Next I'm dry brushing all of the cork and rocks with Morn Fang Brown from Games Workshop. This is a really heavy dry brush and I'm making sure to hit all parts of the cork with it except for the deepest nooks and crannies. Now I'm going back to the exact same color I used on the earth texture, my light brown, and I'm doing a lighter dry brush of this all over the cork and the rocks. Next I'm painting all the skulls with Death World Forest. This is a drab greenish gray. As I paint over the facial features, I'm not painting inside the eye sockets. I'm also not trying to get the brush under or behind the skull, I'm just leaving those areas dark. Now I'm switching to washes. I'm using two different colors here. I'm starting off with a brown wash, Agrax Earthshade, and I'm just splashing this around in random places on the earth texture. After that I'm switching to a Thonian Camo Shade, a greenish brown wash, and I'm putting this in all the places that I missed with the Agrax Earthshade. Feel free to use these washes on the skulls as well. Next I'm switching to Talarn Sand and I'm doing a heavy dry brush on all of the dirt texture. I'm then going to do a light dry brush all around the edges of the cork. The next color I'm using is German World War II Beige from Vallejo, but any khaki or dark bone color will do. I started dry brushing the skull with this and I noticed a mold line I'd missed. It's never too late to get rid of these. I'm going to scratch this off and then give it another coat with the Death World Forest. So once again, dry brush the skulls with a khaki color of your choice. Then one final a very light dry brush over the face with a lighter color. This one is Screaming Skull. 
Next, paint all around the rim of the base with the color of your choice. I usually go with German Grey for this. Once that's dry, you'll want to spray the entire thing with a matte varnish. I normally use Tester's Dull Coat, but any matte varnish will do fine. The final steps for this base involve adding flock. I'm going to be using two different kinds of grass. These are Wasteland Tufts from Army Painter and Citadel Grass. I'm going to be using PVA glue for the Citadel Grass and Super Glue for the Tufts. After cutting the tufts into smaller pieces, I'm going to figure out where I want them to go and then dip them in super glue to attach them. Next, I'm attaching a bit of static grass. Whenever I do this, I mix a bit of water into the PVA glue so that it flattens out a bit better when you apply it. Then I just use an old brush and put it into random places. Now if you wanted to make this even more realistic looking, you could add earth texture and grass to the top of the cork so that it looks more natural. This can be done before you attach the model or after. If you do it before, you should mark out where the feet of the model attach on the cork so you can avoid getting earth texture in those spots. So just as I'm finishing up here, I'd like to say thanks to all the patrons of Heroes and Bosses on Patreon, and a special thanks to Brian Jones. Thank you also to the people who work on and support Watch It Paint It. I hope you guys liked this video. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.